Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's your Kiwi Connection here, Kim Rosun, and today we're going to be putting up a non-reference R9-290, which is going to be the Sapphire Tri-X, against the reference 290X. So a lot of people talk about this, and they say, you know, why get a reference 290X when a non-reference 290 is just as fast? And that's why I wanted to do this video to see. The Tri-X is a very popular uh, 290, one of the most popular, I believe. Uh, it isn't the most powerful, as we found with our uh, 290 tests, although it is very much up there. So I thought this would be a good one to do. Now, there are obviously differences between these two cars. They're both running the same 28 nanometer Hawaii GPU and uh, the same memory, 512-bit memory bus and 4 gigabytes of video memory. Uh, the GPU speeds are the same, so they're both set at 1 GHz or 1000 MHz. Uh, this is the reference, obviously, for the 290X, but it's a 53 MHz bump up uh, for the 290, because the reference 290 uh, runs at 947 MHz. There's a slight difference in the memory speeds as well. Um, the 290 and the 290X run the exact same memory, but the uh, Tri-X has a slight bump up to... 5200 MHz as opposed to the reference 5000 MHz. Uh, but the main difference is obviously aside from the GPU itself which is slightly cut down and the 290. Um, supposedly 10% slower in the reference models um, as we found in our test that was probably the case. Uh, maybe a tiny bit less than that. But there's also the difference in cooler. So as you know, I really like the Tri-X cooler. It's quiet, it's efficient, it's very good. It's just a it's just a good job. Um, the only one so far I've tested that I've found to be superior is the uh, PowerColor PCS Plus cooler. But also with the bigger and better cooler, triple fan opposed to single fan, it's uh, much larger. So the Tri-X comes in at 305 millimeters long opposed to the 266 millimeters long of the reference 290X. It's 113 millimeters wide compared to the 111 millimeters wide of the reference 290X and they're both 38 millimeters tall. So there's not too much difference in the height or the width but it's the length. The Tri-X is quite a long card so you might need to take out a hard drive cage to be able to fit it in your PC if you have a smaller end um, mid-tower or anything smaller than a mid-tower definitely. Uh, so it is quite long but most standard cases like mine as a 650D from Corsair um, fits it perfectly but uh, Catherine, my girlfriend's uh, computer uh, needed to take a hard drive cage out to fit a Tri-X in it, uh, and that's a Cooler Master Storm Enforcer. So it just depends. But that's not a big deal anyway. Um, so yeah, so let's get straight into the benchmarks then. So first up is going to be Furmark. So this is 1080p, 4 times MSA, and I run this for 15 minutes. The Tri-X R9-290 scored 35 frames per second average. The reference R9-290X scored 35 frames per second average, so tie on this one. Interesting. Now into Unigen Valley. This is on the Extreme HD preset. The Sapphire Tri-X 290 scored 58.8 frames per second average. The reference R9-290X scored 61.1 frames per second average, so let's just call that two frames there uh, better for the reference 290X. Then on to Heaven 4.0, this is DirectX 11, everything maxed out. The Tri-X 290 scored 52.1 frames per second average. The reference R9-290X scored 54 frames per second average, so once again, 2 frames. Then, uh, Heaven again, this is an open GL, everything maxed out. The Tri-X, 37.2 average frames per second, the Tri-X 290. The Reference 290X, 38.5 frames per second average, so that one was more like 1.5 frames. Uh, better for the 290X. Now to Tomb Raider, this is everything maxed out without V-Sync. The 
Sapphire Triax 290, 78.1 frames per second average. The Reference 290X, 81.9 frames per second average. So that was four frames there for the 290X. And lastly, Bioshock Infinite. And this is uh, everything maxed out without ambient inclusion. The average for the Triax 290 was 113.9 frames per second. And for the Reference 290X, it was 117. So about three frames there better. So we're seeing about, let's just call it two, three frames, maybe two and a half frames average, uh, better for the Reference 290X over uh, the Triax. So everyone's saying that a reference Triax will beat uh, a, a it's not reference, the uh, non-reference 290 in this case with the Triax won't actually beat a reference 290X, that fully unlocked uh, Hawaii chip, even though it's on the um, not very good reference cooler, will still beat the Triax. So that was quite interesting, but it's not all about performance. As I said, these are that was still pretty close. Only being you know, let's say two, three frames behind is you know in the real world in gaming, it's not going to actually matter. But temperatures. So this was interesting. So the Triax has an excellent cooler on it. Uh, so when I was doing the Fermark benchmark for 15 minutes, I take the highest temperature uh, the card hit and also the highest fan speed it hit. The Triax 290 hit a maximum of 79 degrees Celsius at only 46% fan speed. So that is just phenomenally good. Uh, the 290X, which will run hotter just because it's uh, a fully unlocked chip, ran up to its thermal limit of 94 degrees Celsius, just like the reference 290 at 57% fan speed. So massive win there in cooling for the Triax. Even the Triax compared to the Reference 290, the, it did fantastic. It's just such a good cooler. I also took the temperatures in Heaven 4.0 during the DirectX 11 benchmark. The highest I saw on the Triax 290 was 74 degrees Celsius. The highest I saw on the Reference 290X was 94 degrees Celsius again, running up to its thermal limit. So big one there for uh, temperatures for the Triax. Um, the 290s will run slightly cooler just because they are a slightly cut down GPU. Um, but that's still a massive win. Now to noise. So these reference 290Xs just like the reference 290s are horrendously loud. But uh, the Triax is fantastic. Just using it, it's so quiet. You barely notice it when you're gaming and stuff like that. You'll hear it ramp up a little bit, but it's nothing that bad. The 290 and 290X reference models, it's like you know when you're gaming, it's so loud. It sounds like a hairdryer. Uh, but I'll let you judge for yourself. So this is what the Triax sounds like at idle. And this is what the Reference 290X sounds like at idle. And this is what the Triax 290 sounds like during the Unigen Valley benchmark on load. And here is the reference 290X during the same benchmark on load. So a big difference there. The, uh, the Triax 290 is much quieter and much cooler. So overall who am I going to say wins in this? Now, the 290X does win if you're just looking at the numbers in terms of performance. Let's say two, three frames better 
for the 290X over the Tri-X 290. The difference here is if you are into overclocking, you can easily overclock that trike. It's got so much thermal headroom and you know and so much fan speed headroom as well um, without it still getting too noisy that you could easily overclock the Tri-X and it would be um, maybe bump up that GPU speed by another 50 megahertz, maybe 100. i um, seen a lot of people do that. A lot of people manage to get the 290s up to 1200 megahertz so um, if you're really lucky that is. <laughs> and you could also bump up the memory a bit more and I'm sure you could easily close out that two to three frames difference but honestly that's probably not going to matter anyways when you're gaming. Um, you're probably not going to notice much difference. However, the temperatures are much less on the Tri-X and the uh, noise is much less and usually they're about the same price as the reference 290X or less. It, it obviously depends on where you live and where you shop. Um, so, but generally you shouldn't be paying more for a Tri-X 290 than a reference 290X. Uh, so it's definitely a win for the Tri-X. Even if you're not into overclocking, you're not going to notice the difference, but you are going to notice all the extra heat and noise. So definitely go for the Tri-X 290 over uh, the reference 290X. And as I said, if you're into overclocking, you can easily close that gap. So I hope this explained a few things. I might do this again in the future with uh, after we find out what's the most powerful uh, non-reference 290 that would be a fun video so do the very best of the uh, non-reference 290s against uh, the reference 290X and see if, if that can beat it but as we haven't been through all the 290s yet we can't say yet what is the most powerful so I hope uh, you enjoyed this video I hope you learned a thing or two and I'll catch you guys next time